Korali Farja's latest body horror sensation, The Substance, draws from several different influences. You know, it's no secret. Strokes of Kubrick, Cronenberg, and David Lynch can be found in abundance throughout this movie, and you really don't have to be <laughs> looking that far. But this isn't the least bit uncommon in modern cinema, though, as in this day and age, it isn't exactly easy for filmmakers who aren't already well established in the industry to get proper funding for a feature film, you know, unless the pitch involves some kind of reference to some other popular successful films in the past from other popular directors, you know, in order to give these studio execs some idea of what to expect from you and therefore provide them with a sense of security in greenlighting your project. Unless your name is Christopher Nolan, in which case studios are begging at the knees to have you come back to make your next movie with them. The point is, I guarantee that at least some small part of the pitch for The Substance included a reference to a piece of work or two from Stanley Kubrick or David Cronenberg. And this isn't a bad thing at all, because while these influences can be felt in spades throughout the movie, Never for a second does it feel like some cheap imitation of said influences. You see, the substance doesn't settle for being a mere pastiche. No, it blends its influences together with its own unique voice and style to create something far greater than its individual parts. Something that feels at once familiar yet surprisingly fresh and brand new. You know, I've seen The Shining, I've watched Cronenberg, but I have never seen anything like the substance. And that's because of the voice that I just mentioned 30 seconds ago. The other movies that borrow heavily from their influences end up falling flat because they don't do much else to elevate themselves beyond what they're borrowing from. The Creator, for example, is not a bad film, but I'd be hard pressed to watch that one over something like Blade Runner or the original Star Wars trilogy. Don't Worry Darling, you know, has some great cinematography, but why would I go back and rewatch that when The Stepford Wives already exists? But with the substance, there's so much to love about the narrative, the themes, and the voice of the film that its influences end up feeling like a garnish, a sweet little cherry on top that ties the whole package together in a neat bow. The Kubrick influences pervade a sense of scale and minimalism to the production design and play into the feeling of doom and self-destruction that surrounds Elizabeth Sparkle's narrative journey. The Cronenberg influences bring the body horror elements of this thing to life, especially with the whole idea of a newborn human coming out of Demi Moore's spine. But throughout the whole movie, what remains front and center is the searing criticism and indictment of female beauty standards and the self-destructive ideologies of fading relevancy and star power. This is what makes The Substance such a force to be reckoned with, the way it smartly balances its inspirations with its own story. Oftentimes it feels like filmmakers make too much of a compromise on their own originality and end up leaning far too heavily on the influences that they're borrowing from. And in fairness, I'm sure that in many cases that this has to do with logistics. You know, going back to the creator, for example, I can't imagine Gareth Edwards had anything short of an impossible time getting this thing greenlit. It's the first original big budget sci-fi movie in years, and so any studio he went to with the idea surely saw it as a huge risk. So perhaps he had to lean further into the Blade Runner and Star Wars influences than he would have liked in order to get the funding he needed to bring it to life. And I get that. Sometimes the circumstances are what they are. But I am glad the substance didn't end up in that same impossible scenario. There's so much uniqueness that this film brings to the table. It's frenzied editing, it's bold, all-encompassing fonts that sear themselves into your memory, the plastic and superficial-looking aesthetic of the Margaret Qualley scenes that reflect the wildly unrealistic beauty standards that Sue seems to be embracing. All this and more fluidly coexists with its classic, old-school inspirations. In more ways than one, this film really is a tug-of-war between old and new, narratively, thematically, and stylistically in its cinematography and its production design. There's so much more I can say about this movie, so much to talk about regarding the symbolism of the body horror itself, the tragedy of the third act, the psychology of the whole remember you are one ideology, but much of that stuff has already been spoken on and I don't think I can bring much new to the table in that regard if I'm being honest, at least not enough that would justify a whole separate video. But I did want to dedicate a video to this whole idea of influence meets ingenuity because it's quite rare that a relatively unestablished filmmaker gets the resources to make something this original that intelligently weaves in its influences and inspirations without ever compromising on its own singular vision. So yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you as always for watching, and until next time, take care and peace out.